Welcome to Aloha Friday. I'm your host, Shane Austin. I'm here with my co-host, Dave Austin. Aloha Friday, where greatness is made casual. <laughs> Grab a Mai Tai. Yeah, baby. Of, of age, of course. Relax. Enjoy the show. Uh, because honestly, you know, greatness doesn't have to be so daunting. Greatness can show up in any, you know, all shapes and sizes. And that is what this show is all about. And that's why we're so excited to finally kick back off on season two. I feel like the, the off season was so long, longer than my football off season. So <laughs> I've been eager to get back live on Aloha Friday. I love getting to interact with just all of our guests, our audience, all of that stuff. So Dave, can you kick us off with a, a great gratitude to start us off. Well, you know, you just hit it up. I, I love Aloha Fridays because not only do we get to give a lot of great information out to people, but we get to gain a lot of great information. I, my whole life is about how can I keep expanding? How can I keep becoming better? And so this is perfect, man. We got, I've heard so much about Bill. The funny thing is I've never heard him speak. You know, I speak at CEO space, he speaks, and then we've just never hooked up. So all I've heard is all the great stuff. So I'm grateful that we got Bill on today. That's my yeah. gratitude today, baby. We're, we're, we're setting the stage. We're, we're setting uh you know, Bill, Bill, you got to deliver now. So hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> I know he will because I, I did get to attend his his workshop in, in Tampa and it was awesome. We're going to get into that in a little bit and some of the things that he does. But I'll tell you, for me, I'm just so grateful um, for just the incredible capabilities that we have with technology where we can connect with people all over the world live face to face. And, you know, we get to do it for free. I mean, you guys are both paid highly paid speakers and you know we're just giving this content out for free and um you know that's what it's about it's about a, a abundant world that we live in it's about giving back and it's about spreading the the great messages uh to everybody so i'll tell you for those that um that have been our regulars on our show you know that we always have the queek which is the quote of the week we have you know, Dave, Coach Dave's tip of the day. We have a few different things, but now we want to reward those that are committed, that's our loyal viewers. And we're actually, we're going to say those to the end. So stay tuned the entire way. We're going to have some great content, but then at the end, we'll give you some tips. We'll give you some books that we're reading right now. We'll give you some quote of the weeks and some tips of the day. Um, so get ready for an amazing show. And as always, you know, like I said, this is this is absolutely free. We get we just do it because we love what we do. But we we love when you guys engage with us. When you guys share this, go put that press press the little share button right on the screen. And uh, you know, but comment, engage because it's not for us; it's for you. When you engage and you commit yourself to this, you start living a life. Uh, that's more purposeful. You start to really commit at a whole new level. Watch your life change the more you commit to things and the more you engage with life. So engage with us. We would love it. Um, drop us an aloha all the time. And uh, Dave, before I talk about Bill and then bring him in, can you give us a quick review of the week? Absolutely. Absolutely. And one thing I just want to say, you know, I love this casualness that we step into, but um, I'll be all honesty. I'm casual. My Mai Tai is non-alcoholic. Maybe it might be at one time, maybe not. I feel casual just knowing that I feel like I got a Mai Tai there. So um, I love it anyway. <laughs> so let's do this. So um, our review of the week, this is really fun. Our review of the week comes, I had a chance Saturday to um, work with the United States uh bobsled team and i also did a, a game ready that was recorded for the bobsled team as they fly to uh south korea for the olympics so it's really cool so our our, our review of the week comes from megan henry who we've had on the show before she's awesome and she's on the she does skeleton on the bobsled team the skeleton is as you know because you coached her head first i got to see her finally oh my gosh i was trying to video her she goes by so fast it's like insane it's absolutely insane. But this is what she, this is our review of the week. I have watched. Oh, I have worked with several talented coaches, but was searching for something that could quickly and easily help me center myself in high pressure situations. As the universe would have it, both Shane and Dave and the beast triggers fell into my lap. I didn't start the program until months after the concept was introduced to me. 
and I wish I had started it sooner. But she's in it now and fully engaged. That's your what do we call it? <laughs> the review of the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Megan, my wife chiming in, and she's 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 asking where her mai tai is. I, I'm sorry, I, I did steal yours, so you're gonna have to come. <laughs> to I see some regulars chiming in. Dorothy, looking good. Thanks, Dorothy, and uh, happy Friday from Billy. Billy is always always with us. What's up, Billy? Aloha. And uh, hey, if you're if you're dropping in. Just give us a quick aloha. Let us know you're here. We would love to hear from you. So now let's let's talk about our guest, Bill Sterley. And it, I got the pleasure, like I said, I got to attend one of his workshops and uh, at CEO Space, and it, it was amazing. I, I heard the hype, but uh, you know, until you actually live it, it, it was it's amazing. Now he's an expert when it comes to conflict resolution, um, you know, in the mediation process and that. But he uses you know, it's the communication. It's connecting with people. He's a keynote speaker. He does corporate trainings, uh, leadership communications, which we're going to talk about. But uh, one thing that struck me in the workshop was the, these colors right here. He's got, and I brought him back. He, he, I got some gifts that I brought home. And the colors represent, you know, your, your personality t traits and, and just the way that your, your thinking process is. And, you know, green is organizer. Blue is analyzer. Yellow is visualizer, and then pink or red is personalizer. And then we put it in order based on your strongest thing. So mine is green, blue, yellow, red, and the beautiful dynamic is, I, I think Dave here is uh, quite the opposite <laughs> when it comes to our color schemes. But that it's such an a important point that when you're talking to somebody else, that maybe is a different color scheme or they got a different way of viewing things, understanding where they're coming from can help you connect with them and, and save, save a lot of time and money, which we're going to talk about today. So without further ado, let's bring in Bill to the party and, and give him a warm aloha to Bill. Bill. Hello. Aloha. Hello, you guys. How are you guys doing? Hey, Good to see you. there he is. There's the man. Great, great to be online with you guys. Uh, how's things going? I'm happy to be here on Aloha Friday. Man, and, we are doing uh, great. We are ecstatic here. that you can be joining us here with us today. Uh, we got Sarah saying she's here. Aaron is here. So we got some people nice. starting to come in to, to welcome you in. But first of all, That's we good. always start in gratitude. What's something you're grateful for? Today, right. Well, the thing I'm grateful for is the, the ability, number one, is the ability to share and contribute to your listeners. Uh, the great content that I've collected over the last 27 years of how to simplify and get communication to be more effective, how to reduce conflict in a short amount of time and be able to really engage the process of restoration. When something goes wrong, it's really important to clean things up right away instead of let them linger. And, um, and so the tools and the techniques that I use uh, actually help reduce conflict. And uh, as a high conflict mediator that uh, goes into a room full of 250 screaming people at a city council meeting, it's good to know what to say, you know? <laughs> and if I do that well, it really goes, it really goes well. Are, you, are you so good, Bill? Are you really actually so good you can help Shane and I? <laughs> well, that's what, that's what I've been listening to. I, you know, I, I think maybe we got some work to do there, but... <laughs> Well, I, I always say that's why we make such a good one-two punch because that's true. You know, that's what, true. What Dave lacks, which is you know a lot, I <laughs> fill in those gaps. <laughs> but when we come together, it's it's the full package. Uh, we got yeah. we got Veronica coming in. Aloha, Veronica. Aloha, everybody that's chiming in right now. We're talking to Bill Sterley, and I did allude to these colors and and how that really relates to to this topic that we're talking about. Why do the colors matter? What, what is it in, in a nutshell? Well, the, the, in a nutshell, it's very, really simply speaking. For example, the blue card, if you hold the blue card up, it's like an engineering card. The engineer is logical, analytical, and fact-based. And then if you hold the green card up, um, the green card is the organizer, the person that's more structured, administration, operations is in green. And then um, that's, uh, yeah, right, Shane, you have this green card thing going. And then the red card, the red card is more of the interpersonalizer, the, the people that connects with people, teachers are in this, uh, social workers are more in the red card. And then the yellow card is um, 
really where the artists or the creatives are, the, the big picture thinkers. Uh, marketing is in yellow. So these big picture uh, mindsets. And the, what's really nice about this is that is it uh, gives a really quick, easy way to simply assess what a person's thinking style is, but more importantly, what their communication pattern is. Because each of these thinking things have a different communication pattern and to be able to adjust many times on the fly is what a CEO's got to do, is what a business owner's got to do, is to be able to adjust. Like uh, Shane, you and I talked about, this is what a quarterback needs to do in the huddle, is say the right thing in the right way to the right person in order to get them to hear and then execute uh, whatever the, the team or whatever the play is because they've got to make adjustments on the fly. You know, and, and it really, really makes a big difference. So, yes, you hold this green, blue thing over here, and, and Dave's holding this yellow, red thing over there. And that's called, that's called that collaboration or the tension of the opposites, which so really makes a big difference. You know, and, and yeah. Yeah, one, one thing I was going to say that I noticed when going through these is that, yeah, I'm stronger maybe in these two because I'm very organized and structured and I like the sequence and, and all that stuff. But I also, I, I, Maybe this is just kind of an innate ability since I was young, but connecting with that other side is something that I've had a natural ability for. And, you know, I've seen it translate into being a quarterback because you got to be able to relate to different players on the field. Um, but also I could see where you're talking about how a CEO needs to really understand which each department's coming from and how those can differ. But I want to ask the um, – you know, the audience, I want to ask the, the, the group, I'd love to hear in the comments, you know, what everybody else kind of feels is their colors and what order, which one stands out to you the strongest? Because the first thing, right, is being aware of That's what yours right. is. So that way you can understand the other one. So I, I don't know. I mean, should I just go through a, a, just a couple of them? Um, like, well, yeah. yeah I mean, the, the, the easiest way to do it, Shane, is to think of it this way, is that this um, – the, the blue card has got this mathematical or technical or logical or rational mindset. And some people have that strength, in, like a CFO is there, a CTO, chief technical officer there. Uh, like I said, engineers are there. And then when you go to the green card, these are people that do things in sequence, that do things in a step-by-step. -step. And they're very efficient in implementing. They're very efficient in organizing. They don't pile anything. These people have everything in the filing cabinets and they know where it is. Dave, that's not you. And then. Um, <laughs> where is my filing cabinet? Oh, that's what he said. Right there. See, <laughs> Dave's desk, although we can't see it right now, he has a series of piles. Pile, pile, <laughs> pile, pile. And that's what red and yellow thinkers do. That's called, that's called red and yellow organization is what they do. And, and Kathy just checked in as she's got the yellow, which is that big picture thinking. That's that marketing you know, person. And the red person is the sales person or the human resources person that really comes up and, and does those kinds of things. So it's a really, really, and each one of those different thinking styles are very different. Like Oprah Winfrey is, she's red first, whereas Richard Branson is yellow first. See, that's the Oprah card. And that's the Branson card. Whereas on the blue side and on the green side, that's uh, Jack Welsh is blue. And then Martha Stewart is green. So Shane, that Martha Stewart folding napkins thing, that's a good thing for you. You know, so, so you know, I mean, yes, <laughs> I always guys are like it. buddies. I you know? always knew it. <laughs> Hey, Veronica says, sounds like me and Aaron. I like to have more structure. And I'll tell you, they're a great team, and they bring in both opposites. They're the same kind of one-two punch dynamic. Right. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I see, you know, Kathy's yellow. Um, we got – I want to see anybody else. What's your strongest color? Just on the surface, obviously we haven't gone into depth, but take a moment. Think about which color do you relate to? Are you more logical, analytical? Are you more organized, sequential? Are you more interpersonal, feeling-based, all that? Or are you more holistic, intuitive, integrating, synthesizing? Uh, yeah, put in the comments what color is your dominant trait. And then what we did in the workshop is we went to your weakest trait, right? That's correct, right? Yeah. The weakest strength, the weak, weakest one, whatever your one that's less, that's called your kryptonite card. Your kryptonite card melts your brain 
because because it's not in your strength that melts your brain. So for example, my weak one is blue. Blue's my latest. And because because it's my last one, is that I'll tend to forget to pick up the check. I won't do analysis as much as I need to. I'll not see facts and information that would be valuable. Um, I'm not necessarily as accurate or as efficient as the pe the blue people on my team. They're much better, they're much more effect effective and efficient than I am because they have a blue card. One thing I'm glad to hear that up front is next time we see each other, whether it's CEO space and that, not to go out and have a drink with you because you might forget to pick up the check and then I'll forget to pick up the check and then we'll both be in a heap of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, are you going to get what it's boiling down to? Is though, is once you can be aware of what that is, maybe it is something that you just delegate, you know, and, and and you're able to delegate like you have, but also being able to connect with like I think through this, I've I've learned how to maybe talk to Dave a little bit better when we have our meetings and we're trying to strategize and figure out where to go, and he's going big picture and I'm going let's put it into action. Here's the action steps, and then That's the blend right. comes beautifully that's um, right that's that handoff you're handing off value sets yeah idea to implementation idea to implementation so like next week i'm doing a training with an executive team there are 25 people in the group i had them all take this 120 question survey that tells me how much they are on each one of these things how much they are and then that rolls into a team analysis and that team analysis actually shows the entire group what they're missing inside the group. So if they're missing something inside the group, then what winds up happening is, is that um, that's where the company hits a flat tire or, 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 or bumps in the road because if they're missing red, they're terrible at people issues and customer issues. If they're missing yellow, they're doing the same thing over and over again because they, they don't have as much vision. If they're do, missing blue, they're leaking money all over the place or, or their technology is not in place. If they're missing uh, green, they never seem to get everything done and everything drifts from one quarter to the next and never gets closed and never gets finished because they're spending way too much time in yellow and red land and they're not in, you know, not really balancing the tire out. And so it's it's really important in that, in that team analysis of all those the data that comes together and then I read the team report and go, okay, managers, here's what you're missing and here's the problem with what you're missing. And then it, and then they, they're able to see it. They go like, uh Oh, ding. No, now I understand what, why I'm missing what I'm missing. Okay. I, Does that make sense? I, oh, absolutely. And I, and I see that there's definitely a, um, you know, a fine line or balance within, you know, how Dave and I can play off each other. But also I'm looking here on the, uh, you know, frustrations for green <laughs> and I'm, I'm checking off all the things that uh, <laughs> Dave can frustrate with. But at, at the same time, whether you're a day, uh, a yellow or a red more so, um, you know, I can see my, fr or the frustrations that maybe, you know, frustrate you, but uh, that's, that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And it, it becomes an honest discussion about um, preferences rather than it being personal, it's preference. So I usually say to everybody, it's not personal, it's preference. Mm. It's, not, it's not between you and I, it's between two very, very important thinking styles. So Dave, you know when you're trying to get a athlete into high performance, they need to do some kind of discipline they need to act on discipline, which is really a green repetitive function. But they get caught in the discipline and they get caught in the detail and they forget to have fun while they're playing, that which is yellow and red. So you drag them over into yellow and red, even though they've got to get their uh, performances and their, their structure and their, and their foot pattern down. They can't necessarily, um, uh, they can't necessarily um, uh, really be able to have fun if they're stuck in too much analysis and they haven't let things go if they're not on to the next play because they're thinking about the last play that they screwed up in. They haven't bounced to the new moment and they have to, they got to bounce back from the mistake that just took place. When they do that well, you know, performance returns. 
I've noticed Absolutely. that with the perfectionists that I've worked with is that analysis and they beat themselves up just like you're saying. And I just thought, hey, you know, let's get back to simplicity. Let's just get back to having fun. Why are we doing this in the first place? And, and you nailed it right on the head there. So, Dave, yeah. are you starting to realize? Huh? Yeah, no, yeah. I was just going to just um, add on to what you said. I Major League Baseball players think of this. Major League Baseball. How did they get started in the game? They played Little League Baseball. They were out there. They had fun. And then it carried on a little bit further. Shane, a professional football player, it's fun. Now, he knows how to have fun in his sport now because he's well-trained in it. But I have Major League Baseball players making over $10 million a year that sometimes are in misery because they have lost, you know, the childlike joy. And that's part of what I do is I bring back – you know, take them back into why did you even start playing the game in the first place? Yeah, yeah, and and uh, and and Dave, each one of these each one of these color cards has a defensive pattern or a defensive mindset when they when they start to stress. So, for example, um, I don't know, Shane, if I had you write this on the bottom of the card, did. but the, at, at the bottom of the blue card, at the bottom of the blue card is criticism. Yeah. And then uh, criticism. Criticism is a defensive strategy for blue thinkers. Okay. And green, uh, bring up the green card now. The defensive strategy in green is defensive or defensiveness. They're trying to move into a place of protection. Okay. In red, the strategy is, is contempt. You make me sick. How could you do this? You don't like me anymore. You're not much of a teammate. You don't love me anymore. You know, <laughs> this kind of narrative. And then Dave, here's your favorite card here. The yellow <laughs> card is when things don't go well in Dave's brain, there's this withdraw or this stonewalling or he backs up or he might not. He says, wait a minute, let me think about that a little more. And he might back up. Now, if you know what the person's pattern is, it only takes three to five sentences to bring them back into the engagement. You know, so Dave, Dave, this is what you would say to Shane. As soon as Shane becomes a little defensive, you'd say this sentence. Shane, let's see if we can put this in order and let's see if we can build some structures on here. Let's go ahead and do, put some steps down. He'll immediately come to the table. He'll let go of all of his stuff. He'll go, oh, sure, Dad. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> and then now, meanwhile, I, I'll, I, you have to pull me back from hanging out with Richard Branson too much to come back and now tell me what, because I like the fact that Richard's in this yellow with me. I like that's not a bad place to be. So go ahead. Sarah, yeah. Sarah's in the house. Sarah's a red. She says. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah's red. Sarah's red, man. Love it. Anybody else? Oh my God. Yeah. And so, and then, um, and then, um, when when Dave starts to. When Dave starts to go into withdraw, Shane, the sentence that you can bring him back is, is, Dad, tell me a little bit more about those ideas. Let me talk about the overview a little bit more. Let's see about how this is going to fit in the big picture. And his brain will go, oh, it's not dangerous anymore. I can come back in here, you know, and I don't have to, I'm not tied down to anything right now. And then he'll actually start smiling and engaging in the process in a whole different way and, and then that'll tend to that'll tend to work a little bit a little bit different a little bit better you know so, so. This, is, this is leading perfectly into just the title of this show is saving time and money with your communication like so i mean those are already some great examples people can see but i mean you really can save time and money just with your words that's right that's right. By word selection. That's correct. That's correct. Now, yeah. word selection, I, I estimate that I can save an executive anywhere between 90 minutes to two hours a day just by uh, word and thought and belief change. Now, think about how much time that is, uh, you know, to save, you know, 10 hours a week. What would that mean to somebody if you're saving 10 hours a week Jeez. just by just by taking and, and upgrading your languaging pattern and getting some training on that, boy, that would seem like it would work a heck of a lot better. You know, and um, how do you talk when there's emotion around? How do you reduce emotion when, when somebody says something tragic? What can, what can you say or do to be compassionate and also be effective at the same time? So as a conflict mediator, because that's a big part of saving time and money, 
is that if, if, a, if, if people are in conflict, that's low performance. I mean, low performance is when conflict, it doesn't mean that you can't learn something from the comment conflict. It can't mean there can't be a breakthrough. Human beings actually, their brain actually needs a form of conflict to do a thing called a dendrite pop, that all of a sudden they pop into a greater dendrite um, expression in, uh, neurologically. And um, this pop takes place when we start you know, shifting our language patterns. And so any sentence, the worst sentence that, that you can imagine, I can convert to a compassionate sentence in real time. So you can imagine how much time that says saves by somebody says something really junky and I'm turning it into something compassionate. The emotion on the person's side starts to reduce and now I'm in a more effective place. I'm not fighting a 45 minute battle which most people are fighting, or a seven-day battle, or a hundred-year battle. Some people are fighting the same battle in their head over and over again. It's like, no, you know, you know, you missed the tackle, you know, that you know kept the Saints out of uh, the playoff game. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm still hurt by that, by the way. I'm a big Drew Brees fan, uh, and that just that ruined his great comeback, and I was so uh, in awe. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm still a little salty if you can't tell. <laughs> but yes, yeah, I'm with you on this. I wouldn't have brought it up if I didn't have so much pain around it. Um, and so so it's, it is the challenge. It is the challenge that we have as human beings is that, is that those things stick and neurologically and physiologically. They stick in our consciousness. And then what happens is that we're not able to bounce back. The career could be lost. The 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 opportunity could be lost, and then you got to mourn that, and then learn how to move on and get into a place called restoration, or a place called repair. Restoration with yourself, repair with other people, and so whatever conflict that you've ever had or have engaged in, there's an opportunity for restoration and for uh, you know repair. And those are things that are really, really important as, as a part of the human experience. Because if you ruminate or resentment builds and then the disconnection takes place, and all of a sudden somebody that you were a good team with is not a good teammate anymore because these little resentments, Dave, you and I can make a lot of money here in this particular detail, um, because these particular you know high profile, high, um, athletes, they don't even know that they're competing for respect when mutual respect is what they need to be going for. They don't know that, that, that that's what they might be doing. They might be struggling with how to uh, restore trust. Why? Because last time, you know, he dropped the ball or, you know, he booted something <laughs> and things didn't go well. And trust is something that's got to be restored play by play game by game, you know, week by week, you know, that's, right. you know, you got to get in some kind of restoration, no. some kind of restoration narrative. That's so important. And for anybody just tuning in now, I mean, we're, we're talking with Bill Sterling here and we're, we're already getting into just amazing discussion in the way that the styles that people think is one way, you know, one size does not always fit all. So it's a matter of adapting and, and using the power of your words and communication to, efficiently, you know, get the results that you're, you're designing and get that connection, get, get together with people. And we, we brought up already some leadership things because that was the next thing I wanted to get into. But we talked about how a CEO has to be adaptable. We talked about as me as a quarterback, I have to be able to be adaptable within the huddle with, because everybody has their own specific job. But one thing that just, I think is so fascinating to me because we're talking about communication and I want to see kind of your take on this. You know, when I went and played in China, the, in, back in uh, 2016, you know, the biggest thing is we have half Chinese players and a lot of them don't even speak English. So, I mean, there was a huge communication barrier there and it wasn't necessarily the teams who had the best strategies or the best scheme who were the most successful that season. It was the ones who could communicate the most effectively in an environment where communication is, is, is at a struggle. So we had a thing in the huddle where I kept it very simple kept it very simple, but where I just give the play call, you know, just what the linemen need. I give the uh, separate call basically to all the receivers and what they need to do. But then I also had nonverbal 
communication where I would give a number or a sign, some kind of sign to the other guys who just need to know what they need to know. And because of that simplicity and that efficiency, we, we ended up, you know, the best offense in the league that year, but it was, it was communication was the biggest advantage. Do you have yes. any, yeah. Any thoughts on that? Well, first off, uh, hats off to, you know, the adaptability and the strategy that you picked in communicating with everyone. And this gets us into a really, really important topic called our core language software. Every human being has a core language software. It's sort of like the core um, hard drive that runs a human being. So for example, human beings have a core language software around the need for connection. They have a core language software around the need for choice. They have a core language software around the need for respect. They have a core language software around the need for fairness. Can you imagine then if we're whatever human being is, if you're building a fairness or a trust narrative or a respect or a clarity narrative or a choice or a freedom narrative or a connection or a cooperation narrative, you're right at the core operational system of the human beings. Um, language is divided into two specific things. There's a context up here and there's a subtext that's running here. The context is what everybody's speaking. The subtext is the core software that I was just talking about. Mm. And what happens is, is that many times in mediation, I'm listening to what the context is, but I'm speaking to what the subtext is. I don't even maybe even repeat back what the context is. I don't even answer the context question. All I do is speak to the subtext. The emotion comes down, they're willing to listen, and then I get a better result in a shorter amount of time. Time hmm. is money. We've got to get the time to be reduced. We need to increase the money of our value of the time that we spend. And if we're operating on the core software, then what winds up happening is, uh, is it becomes uh, more cooperation, shows up more collaboration, and we're actually able to manage our emotions better. Manage our emotions better. And then it gets better. Okay, so um, uh, I, I could see both of you smile, and you're just <laughs> I got a little bit of that thing. But it, that is that is a huge difference between context and subtext, and any sentence that one says uh, can be shifted to a subtext sentence, whatever sentence that's being spoken. So obviously, okay. take a little practice. Dave, you better be taking notes. I don't see you taking any notes right now. This is really hold on. I want. I want an example. I want an example of of, of a sentence that you're going to do. You know, something says something, then give me the subtext communication. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, a subtext sentence. Uh, would sound like, let me make sure I got my battery going here. Um, a subtext sentence is like this. So let's take a very, very simple sentence. The sentence is, I like her. That's the sentence. Okay, so both of us know that the I like her sentence is a, contents, a context sentence. Let me make sure my battery keep, doesn't give out on me here. I might have yeah, to go. Don't cool. lose you. <laughs> I know, right? She is right in the middle of it. Right in the yeah, in the meat right, of it. Right, right, right in the meat of it. Right. So the um, yeah, I think I might need to. Yeah. Okay. I got to switch my things. Okay. So um, think of the sentence. I like her. Okay. I like her. And I'm gonna move to plug in here. <laughs> so the sentence I like her. How many different ways can the sentence I like her be so said? Give me an uh, example. Give me. How could you say it? So give me an example while uh, while I plug in so I don't run out of our. I, I, here. You could, I, I like, I really like her. Sarah says, woohoo, Sarah's need for contribution is being met by seeing some of her favorite people talking together. I love it, Sarah. Thanks for, uh, for chiming in. We do, we do this show just for you. <laughs> um, all right, Dave, I like her. Can you change that? I love her or she is liked by me. Um, um, what else? 
I hope she likes me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's. Um, She's hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love. Her. So what I'd like for you to do is just shift it gently. And so what I like to do is have you shift it just slightly. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Put a put a question mark. You don't have a password. You just have to accept behind the question. I like her. And how would that sound? I like her. <laughs> do I like okay. her? So. I like her as the context. The subtext is, could you be feeling doubtful because your need for truth is not met? Mm. When it's a question mark, yeah. doubt and truth. So far, is that good? Yeah. yeah. Now, now, now put an exclamation part, point behind it and then say the same sentence. I like her. So could you be feeling excited because your need for connection would be met? Mm. Now say it in a seductive way. So, <laughs> All right, Dave, I'll let you do that one. I'm <laughs> I like her, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so could you be feeling energized because your need for intimacy might be met? Mm. Amen. <laughs> See, it's the same context, but it, the subtext changes with the feeling and the need that the person is experiencing as they're expressing it. So when I was training 35 monks in mindfulness training, let me see if I can see if you guys could just hear that sentence again. Yeah, I was going to say 35 monks. <laughs> yes, when I, was when I was training them to communicate more compassionately when they were not meditating in their practice, when they were doing everyday chores around the, the monastery, I needed to teach them how to convert the judgmental things they were saying about each other into compassionate things to say to each other. Hmm. Now so, then, is compassion well, because, just for a certain personality or a certain color, or does that kind of go across the board? It goes across the board. Uh, That's right goes across the board so mm -hmm. so before bill had a chance to work with these monks two of the very senior monks were both in and they're at the altar they're they're there very high senior was saying i am nothing i am nothing i am nothing and the next senior monk came and said i am nothing i am nothing and then the junior monk came in saw them doing it and sat down and started going with them i am nothing i am nothing Senior monk looks it over, and the other senior monk, they hit each other, and they go, ha, look who thinks he's nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill came in and erased that judgment yeah. and allowed them all, all to go to nothingness. <laughs> so so true. <laughs> oh, so sorry about that. I had to so that so true. Very funny. That's I love funny. it. And, and I feel like, like we can, we can go to – I know now. you will, but just quote me on it, okay? Say, I, I will. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I love it. I love it. So we, we could go, I mean, days on this topic. I, I freaking love it. Like, I'm just so fascinated by all of this. Yes. Uh, but yes. I, think we, I think it's time to get into the final four. And now yeah. we've okay. adjusted them a little bit for those that are, uh, you know, been on the show before or watched it before. We, we've, we've made some uh, adjustments, and uh, we'll see if Bill is up to the task. But these will be the same questions we ask every guest each week. Dave, you want to kick us off with the first one? Sure. Beside your parents. The reason we say beside your parents, almost everyone, their influence has been their parents. But besides your parents, <laughs> as you're growing up, who was someone that you really looked up to? Well, um, I, I really appreciate three specific mentors. Um, uh, the first mentor is a guy named Ned Herman who developed those cards, those color cards. He worked at General Electric with the Herman Brain Dominance Instrument, and he developed those thinking style cards. And it really made a huge difference at General Electric and with all the companies that I've trained 
and uh, throughout the world, uh, one of my strongest mentors. The That's second pretty one, big company, General Electric. <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. The second mentor um, is a gentleman named Marshall Rosenberg. Marshall Rosenberg is an international mediator. He would fly to war-torn countries and with a languaging tool, get people to stop killing each other with just a languaging tool. Wow. Okay. And this whole context and subtext thing I was going is a big part of understanding how do you speak compassionately, which is how do you speak subtext in the face of people speaking context and labels and diagnoses of each other. Now, the third mentor that I look up to and I really it was a big part of my development is a gentleman named uh, Joseph Campbell. And Joseph Campbell was a, a, a person that taught the hero's journey and the mythic model. And it was the core, it's what, it was George, what George Lucas used to write Star Wars, was the mythic model, the hero's journey. And I teach the hero's journey um, uh, classes to, to everything from actors to business owners. And the hero's journey really helps us navigate around the process of, of life in a very healthy way and the process of challenges in a healthy way. So those are my three mentors that really have made a huge difference for me that, uh, that really made a big difference. So I hope, they, I hope I answered number one question. Absolutely, crushed it. Okay. All right, number two, if you could, what's one thing you tell your younger self? Oh my gosh, that, um, that emotional safety can be um, emotional safety uh, uh, between other people can be met by using compassionate language towards them. I used to have a belief that if somebody felt bad, it was my fault. That was one of my beliefs. If somebody was upset, it was about me. Well, I kind of learned more, more from Marshall Rosenberg. I learned that it was really they were in pain about something, and then I could use my gifts of language to connect to their pain and then reduce the pain and it had really literally nothing to do with me or very, very little to do with me. Cool. So that's mm-hmm. very cool. So question number three, in the past five years, what winning habit has most improved your life or what losing habit have you let go of? So the winning habit's easy. Um, the winning habit has to do with two concepts. Uh, the winning habit is called bring bad news early. That's the winning habit. Bring bad news early. And then the second habit, the second concept is apply scary honesty. So if you're, if something is scary, then you need to be honest about it. And apply number two to that is bring it, bring bad news early. It might sound like, hey, Shane, I have some scary honesty. I need to bring this to you early so we can get through it. Are you ready? <laughs> no. Please, no. <laughs> well, that's it's great because we just had our you know B B S thirty day uh, training just wrap up today. We had our last call and we were on the topic of courage and facing fear, just like you're saying it. It's not running away from it, but it's it's facing it, kind of like you're saying it. Hey, just be yes. brutally honest with this thing that's scary. And what is it telling you? Because there's answers, you know, if we're willing to dig in, we're willing to ask the questions, um, you know, then the answers will be able to. In in our beast training and beast program, Roger Anthony brought something that, oh, my, it sometimes would freak me out. But it was a beautiful thing. He goes, we need to have an in rock time. In rock was integrity time. It just it warned me that there's something that has, you know, that we need to look at and and take a look at it. and so it was, but it's a beautiful way of doing it because you now heads up like, oh, okay, yeah. And generally when we had an in rock time, it was always a, a positive game changer for us. Right, right. That's really powerful. Very, very powerful to do integrity, put integrity in front of the list. Yeah, it's yeah. a huge difference. I love that winning habit. And, you know, we're big on winning habits. It's a, we're all <laughs> creepy habits. So having winning habits are, are very powerful. So that's that's a great one. So anybody watching right now, hey, add that to your new winning habit list. But, uh, number four, what lesson from your journey so far will you always cherish? What lesson? Boy, the one that popped into my head was a, was a, one, a, a very, very valuable lesson. And the lesson is, is that um, – 
uh, the highest form of intelligence. Um, the highest form of intelligence is the ability to observe without judgment. Now, just let that one sit in your noggin a little bit because it's uh, really very powerful. It's, the highest form of intelligence is the ability to observe without judgment. So let me give an example to that because I think it's going to be really valuable to you and your listeners. Um, for example, if you see milk on a table, usually our mind says this following sentence, who spilled the milk on the table? That is a line delivered in judgment. But if you say it in observation is, I see that there is milk on the table. Now I'm in observation. There's no judgment about what the who put it there. There's no judgment it should be cleaned up or not. It's I see milk on the table mm. instead of who the hell spilled the milk on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I love Which, it. You know, and that works out with kids great because the more we speak with kids, just kids in observation instead of speaking to kids without judgment, the more truth we get from them, the more trust we get with from them. The less upsets we get, the, the, the less they have to protect themselves because they're in the process of learning and the process of downloading information and language patterns. So those are that, uh, that highest form of intelligence. Um, and that's actually a Krishnamurti quote that he really said, see if you can train your mind to stay in observation um, and stay away from judgment. It's not... It's not you miss the tackle. It's, <laughs> it's you know, I, you know, he, here's where your technique dropped. Here's where uh, you lowered your eyes. Here's where uh, you didn't uh, get in good football stance. Yeah, miss the I've tackle noticed. doesn't help us. Good, yeah, no, good coaches use that terminology. You, I mean, you worded it perfectly. And that's when you can tell the difference between a, a, you know, a good coach and a great coach, those those few key words, because people are so quick to judge, and that's such a great point. So I, I'm really liking how these final four questions are starting to take, take shape because those are some incredible answers. Um, two, two, two state football championships oh, as really? a part of a team. Two, that was part of two of them. Nice. So. That was one thing I never got was a state championship, but my, my youngest brother, Daniel, he won state in tennis, their team. So he gets to wear nice. that proud. He's the only one in the family of all athletes, the only one to win a state championship. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. So I'm sure, you know, as we're wrapping things up, I'm sure people, there's still a lot of questions to be answered. There's still a lot of just stuff. And I'm still wanting to just keep going on and on. But where can people find you? Where can they get in contact with you? Well, Shane, uh, the easiest way is through my website, which is um, uh, the easiest way is through my website, which is corporateculturedevelopment.com. And it's uh, three words together, corporateculturedevelopment.com. And you'll see some videos on there and some uh, ways to get in touch with me. My, um, my phone number is 310-433-8380. And uh, the easiest way is just text that number, and then if I'm not in session, I should be able to get back to me, uh, get back to you if you, if uh, just uh, mention this call, and you know we'll uh, mention this session, and then we'll we'll get back with you if any any conflict that you're facing, or or you want to learn a little bit more about how to use these tools in real time, because that's really how to increase your emotional intelligence is to be able to be compassionate in the moment speak subtext in the face of context and then things change things well, change I, right away i gotta say you might have just opened a can of worms because uh you put in your your phone number out there i mean hey you never you don't know who's gonna you know hey go back replay and um get, get his phone number because then you can you can send him any, any prank phone call you want no i'm just kidding it's, it's an ace it's an ace in your it's an ace in your deck is what it is play the ace i love it play the I love ace it. I, uh, I put also your web page in the description. So if you guys want to scroll up to the description, the web page is there. You can just click it, go straight to it, get some more info. So, Bill, thank you so much for taking the time. Again, everybody who's sticking around, we're going to give you some tips. But I want everybody to give just a warm aloha to Bill and bring in his guidance, his valuable, um, gee, just value, content. Thank you for being you and, and taking the time today with us. Yeah, thanks, Bill. All right, guys. Really, really you guys take care. It, my friend. Okay.
All right. Well, I appreciate you. Aloha. Aloha. Take, Take care. Lots of fun. All right. Bye. All, All right. right. So, as promised, for those loyal viewers, we thank you so much. We want to give you some great final tips, queeks. But first of all, I want to give just a quick recap. If you're just tuning in, definitely go back and check out the replay, not just for Bill's personal cell phone number, but for all the amazing content that we talked about and how the different personalities can really interplay when, when used correctly. You know, we can find the, uh, the weakness maybe you have and delegate it to somebody who has that as a strength. Me and Dave are a great one-two punch example of that. But um, also just understanding what other people's frustrations and what's at the bottom of it. Get below the surface of the words and get to what's really matter and get to the, and get to the point. You save time. When you save time, you save money. A um, lot of valuable, valuable nuggets in there. Dave, do you have any, anything else from that? Well, I'm going to give you – can I move right into the tip from that? Oh, go, right, go right away, Coach Dave. All right. So, so if you think about that, the different colors, a lot of times, you know, when you hear that, we sometimes get into judgment like, oh, well, is that bad or good? Is this, this or that? Hey, own who you are. Own your strength. You notice how there are different colors, but if you own your strength, you know, we just talked about here's my strength. And then Shane's is a different strength. It's not saying he's better than I am. I'm better than him. I think I'm better than you are, but well, I know that, but we're going to give you some pills and keep taking those and then you'll get over it. But anyway, you know, the truth is, is that I need your strength and you need my strength. But if we go, oh, but I'm not that. And then we let our weakness get in the way of our strength. Then we can't move fully boldly forward. So I think it's that ownership of who you are and own your strength. The stronger you are, we all, I mean, we mentioned it. Um, I mentioned it on last uh, Sunday. Watching um, Brady, 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 Tom Brady is going to be coming into the um, uh, the Super Bowl, and yet his linemen are faster than he is. <laughs> but he can get lost in the fact that I'm not a very fast quarterback. My feet are slow. And if he went to the combines, this is just something. If you ever watch my game readies on Sunday, tap in. Yeah, this is just something information. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. But the truth is, is that um, he owns his strength, and that's yeah. why he's successful. That's yeah. really the tip of the day. Own your strength. Yeah, and Bill does a great job of that because he knows that maybe the blue is maybe his weak side, and he doesn't just try to, okay, I'm going to try to bring that up. No, he just delegates that to somebody who, who does so he can focus on his true strengths, which are over here. So I love that tip. Um, the quick. For those that don't know, for those that follow me on, on Instagram, you know the Queek is the quote of the week. And I had to go with Yogi Berra this week because we have <laughs> our beast camp and spring training coming up at the end of this month, which is going to be very exciting. We get to go behind the scenes with ma Major League Baseball players. So definitely, you know, get in contact with us if you want more info on that. But um, Yogi Berra, baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. <laughs> Not sure if that math equates, but I tell you, the mental side is an important part of sports, business, and life. And we're going to dive into that, and you're going to see how we bring 90% mental to the other half physical at spring training at Beast Camp. Um, another thing that I want to start doing in, in this is just giving a little, hey, what, what are some books that we're reading right now? Like currently, um, I, I'm reading right now uh, Tribe of Mentors by Tim Ferriss. Great book. It's got he's, he's interviewed 100 plus uh, very successful people just with the same 11 questions just to get different inputs. So it's kind of like our final four on steroids. And um, he gets some really valuable stuff. So definitely check that book out. I just started it, though. So uh, I'm excited to, to continue to get um, on with that. Dave, last question for you. Predictions. Who is going to win the Super Bowl this Sunday? Oh, my. Oh, my. Well, you know, I have to be honest. I didn't know you were going to ask that, but um, I know I, just, I threw you I, a curveball. Yeah, and I love it. I can hit. I, I've hit curveballs well. So anyway, I my my feeling is is New England's going to take it, but I'm actually going to be rooting for Philadelphia, and so I don't even want to say that that New England's going to take it because I'm going to start putting energy now towards Philadelphia. Because I, I don't know. I just like it when a team hasn't had a chance to be 
there in a long time and they've worked not saying that that new england hasn't worked and deserved to be there they deserve to be there they're a powerhouse i just want to see someone else who hasn't been there in a while kind of start figuring out getting their act together have to go with the their backup quarterback they don't have their star quarterback and last week man he really st- stood up to the plate and i love seeing that that's just something i love so i'm going to predict New England, even though I don't know if I can buy myself into all that. I'm trying to talk myself into it. You've got to go with the team that you're going with. Um, I have a special place for backup quarterbacks, as you know. (laughs) I've been there before. So when you get an opportunity to shine, man, I love it. He's shining right now. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. As always, start your week strong with Dave's Facebook Live Sunday evenings to get your game ready for the week. And then finish your week with a Mai Tai, with us on Aloha Fridays. (laughs) Hey, and reach out and explore our beast training programs that we talked about and join our beast family where you can connect with like-minded, high achieving game changers, just like yourself. And, um, you know, with that, this is Shane, Dave Austin signing out. See you next week on Aloha Friday. Hey, where greatness is made casual. Aloha. Aloha.